the top five worst MCU movies. Yeah. We'll try to get through them a little bit quicker than that last one. Uh, do you want to do yours or? Uh, I haven't. I'm. I, I'm. I haven't really even formulated what they are. Right. Really. So I'll go with know. my number one. The absolute worst MCU film ever created. If you say Thor, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> it's Guardians of the Galaxy t- Volume 2. All right, mine is too, so we can we can cross that one off the list. I knew that one for sure. Yeah. So, so the uh, Guardians Volume 2 was everything that Guardians Volume 1 wasn't. Yeah. Uh, it was humorless. It was crazy. I don't but think it, in the worst way possible. I don't think it was humorless. I just I think it was much <laughs> less uh, funny. There were one or two jokes I think that landed for me. It was like Black Panther. Like I was like, I laughed at a few like one or two jokes, and then the rest of them I was just there like, what the hell are they doing with my favorite character right now? He's not Peter Quill. What's going on? That was my experience with it. Uh, I thought it had Chris Pratt at his worst ever. Now that's saying something as, a, as an actor. But Chris Pratt's acting Damn. was abysmal in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. sorry? Chris Pratt. And that's, that's saying I think something. It, I, also, I don't think it was his acting, though. I think it was partially oh, his do. acting, and I think it was mainly his writing. The writing of the character. Oh, the writing was terrible. James... Is it James Gunn? I don't know if he wrote it. He directed it. I'm pretty sure he, he at least really? co-wrote it. Well, he should be ashamed. And it was so. terrible. Because I should, I know. how can you have... Go on. How Go. can you have, in my opinion, the best movie be the first one and then the worst like be the second? Now, that said, we're going to disagree. It's not the best I don't movie. think... It's up there. I don't think any... I just want to make this point clear. I don't think any MCU movie, that is, movie is horrible or even bad. I just think there's... A, Amazing movies to mediocre, slightly less than mediocre, kind of upsetting. I don't think there's actually something that's left a foul taste in my mouth. Well, that's because you are so biased when it comes to superhero movies. <laughs> I am. I can I... comment on a few superhero movies that have left a foul taste, though. So there are there they are out there. The MCU does not yeah. create a hit every time. I know that might be upsetting for some people, but. There are actually some bad movies in the MCU. Uh, so, what else is wrong with Guardians Volume Two? Um, Soundtrack wasn't as. It was a fun. cartoon. Uh, it was a it was a cartoon. I hate it when directors can't. And look, Guardians One. You can be like Guardians One was kind of a cartoon too. It was Bert and Barbin. but there was a border. There was a border between what's gonna pull you out. So cheesy, it's gonna pull you out, and what's not. And Guardians Two. He literally turns into Pac-Man at one point. When Drax is hitting off trees, they have pinball sound effects. Yeah. Like, these things are things you don't do in a live-action movie, or else the audio... Well, m- me personally, I'm just going to be like, what? Like, the second that happened, there was Neron early in the movie when Drax came out and he hit the trees and there was pinball sound effects. I literally was just like, oh, God, what a, what did they do? Like, what the hell are we in for? I thought it was one of the most boring movies, too. I... I strongly disliked the villain. Like The villain was... He left the foul taste okay, on that. The villain made sense. What he was doing made sense because that is Ego, the living plant. His name is literally Ego. But, it was such a dumb thing. He's like, we're gonna be friends. We're gonna be father and son. Oh, by the way, I killed your mom. Like, yeah. what? Nice. Why would you just bring yeah. that up? Like, I guess you are, you have an ego, so, but no, like, that's just... That's beyond ego. That's just stupidity. Right? Just a second. So, the bad acting, the cartoony feel, uh, the less than stellar soundtrack, and the boring villain. I, I just think all of these factors combined make it the absolute worst MCU film we've ever had. Um, uh, I want to make a, another note. I haven't seen Iron Man 3. From what I've heard, it's probably the best of the trilogy. But it's like the only MCU movie I haven't actually watched at all. Like not even slightly. Um, I guess we can move on to number two if you have unless you have something else to say about Guardians. Um All I have to say about it is that it was the biggest it it's not I don't I still don't think it's a bad movie. 
but it's probably the most disappointing comic book movie I've ever seen in my life. I literally was sad at the end of that movie because Guardians 1 was held so high for me. I hold Guardians 1 as high as movies like The Empire Strikes Back and... As oh, come as on, man. Go away. That and, is biased to... Go away. And shit, I can have an opinion. And Schindler's List. <laughs> and it is, in my opinion... It's Marvel's best movie they've ever made, in my opinion. And that's not just the MCU. And Guardians 1. Guardians 1. And the fact that Guardians 2 dropped its standards so significantly... It literally depresses me at times <laughs> when I think about it. Yeah. But I'm still going to buy it. <laughs> a long spiel about how it depresses yeah. me. It makes me sad that I'm like... Don't support gonna... Disney. If they create bad movies, you don't I buy them. I need it for my collection. Don't buy crap I movies. I need it for my collection. No, you don't. <laughs> Alright, can I... Do you want me to go with number two this time? Sure. Alright. We'll go look back and forth this time. For who goes first. Uh, Black Panther. Really? Yep. It's pretty low on your list. Um, Black Panther was bad, man. It was, well, like I said, none of them are bad, but... I think, I personally do think Black Panther's a worse movie than Guardians. It just wasn't as d disappointing as Guardians to me. I think Black Panther's most overhyped Marvel movie in existence. And it's the only Marvel movie... Where I literally got bored as shit in theaters. That's the only one that's done it. Well, MCU, I should say. It's, it's very, only... it's very slow paced at yeah. parts. I, I really don't know why it's held up so high. Yeah, I literally was like, I was in theaters waiting for the only scenes I really enjoyed were Killmongers, and I was waiting for something to happen, and it never did. And then the CGI rhinos came in in the third act, and I was like, yeah, this movie's garbage. <laughs> Uh, in fact, if I was to say, it, are any Marvel movies bad, it probably Black Panther would probably be the one. Well, it's funny because besides um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I was like, I want my money back. <laughs> as soon as the movie was over, I want my money back. I, I, can't even, I think what I said to you was like, that was boring. I think that was the... Or we the, said, I, it was I think we like, said like the, that was mediocre. Like That yeah. was pretty... It wasn't bad. I, I was it taken cool. back by how like overhyped it was. I was just like, that was the best Marvel movie to date. Like, that? I went through my speculation too. I was like, there's no way and it's actually the best movie. People who were people were convincing it to Winter Soldier. For all you out there who com who fucking uh, compared it, not necessary, compared it to Winter Soldier, you should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> you should actually be ashamed of yourselves. How can you look at yourself in the mirror? Black Panther is not. No. Nearly as good as, as uh, and Winter Soldier. spoiler warning, big spoiler warning, I hope you got sad when he died in Infinity War. I hope he did. And guess what? The Russo brothers said he ain't coming back, so I hope he doesn't. We don't need any more of that character. That's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just sad say, that they compared it to Winter Soldier. Black Panther, <laughs> in his whole 15 minutes or 20 minutes in Civil War, had a much more interesting... And a uh, complete character arc than he did in his own film with the same name. He doesn't. T'Challa doesn't change by the end of his film. This was one of the major issues I had with it. I wasn't able to to um, really get immersed with this Sky as the hero. Like he didn't. It's boring. He had he. People are like he has an arc. That is not an arc. No, that, is that was not a character shoe arc. shoehorned an arc at the very end. That's yeah. all that is. That you know what an arc needs? It needs development throughout the entire movie. See, the problem was, T'Challa already had his character arc. Like he had his great character moment in Civil War, and he had nothing to learn. So what was the point of giving him his own movie? I think he could have had his own movie. I just think, why the hell did they choose that route? Well, yeah. Right? Why did they go with like? The beginning of Black Panther story. Why? You've done the beginning of Black Panther in Civil War. Skip it, man. Killmonger's so badass. Make a new story with that character, man. Give me more Killmonger. Killmonger was actually the best thing about the movie. He which was. is why I wouldn't put it so low on my list as you did. He's the saving grace, and he's probably the only reason, too, that it bumps up above Guardians. I think Killmonger is... The best villain the MCU's had so far. 
But I think Thanos is coming up close to it the more I think about it. Because, for one, he's just in a better movie, and for two, he gets more time. See, I think the Winter Soldier is better than both of them. But, I, like I said, I don't consider the Winter Soldier really a villain. Right? If I was to put him in, I guess, yeah, he probably would be better than the two of them. There's people out there that think Loki's the best villain. That's like... Just choke those people. <laughs> Loki's boring as a villain. <laughs> he's alright in Thor. The god of mischief? Like, what the fuck does that even mean? He's not evil. <laughs> it's just dumb. Yeah. So yeah, I. That that's really the only reason I. Oh, give it up. <laughs> <It's> so. <cute. laughs> so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about why Black Panther is the second worst to me. So what's your second worst? My about? second worst. I'm gonna want to smack you because of this list. I bet. It's the Incredible Hulk. It's the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's the Incredible Hulk. Holy fuck. This was a, this was a really hard toss-up for me. Oh, how, so you watched the entire Incredible Hulk movie. I right? don't have to. I know how bad it is. I've I've seen bits and pieces. He's even seen I've seen it. bits and pieces of Two Worlds 2, and I must say it's a horrible game. Well, anyway, you were saying... Actually, you saw bits and pieces of the multiplayer. No, I played a little bit of the single player. Oh, no, you never. The intro. <laughs> Um, from what I've seen, this is, okay, we've only had, like, two Hulk movies, technically, but this is easily the worst of the two, and a lot of people... Ang Lee's Hulk is garbage, but Mark Ruffalo's Hulk is better than both of them. So, but I would say this is easily the worst Hulk we've ever gotten, and I, I've never been more disappointed by a superhero movie. No, I, I, Ghost Rider. It even Ghost Rider one was better than Incredible Hulk. <laughs> no, and that as a as a film. Ghost Rider's your favorite comic book character. How can you say that? Yeah, well, they decimated him, but like there were a couple of things to like. There was absolutely nothing to like about the Incredible Hulk as a film. Oh, go away! The Incredible Hulk as a film was actually a half decent. Let's film. talk about the worst thing about it. Edward Norton's in. Edward Norton was a good Bruce Banner. No, he is one of the worst actors in Hollywood, <laughs> and I think he's a complete asshole in real life. So why are you still hiring him? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he. Hey, guy, I've never met. I hate you. <laughs> he's got the most annoying voice for an actor. Like I, I can't stand listening to Edward Norton for more than like thirty seconds at a time. Uh, yes, this is obviously biased, because I hate him as an actor, but I just don't think he has any acting range. He's terrible. So... To, I disagree. To cast him as... American History X. <laughs> don't you even do it. Don't you even do it. They will fucking attack you if you do it, and you know they will. Literally, he's only good film. <laughs> but Fight Club? Fight Club is absolute garbage. He's pretty, he's pretty bad in Fight Club. Um, Brad Pitt was bad in Fight Club too. Act, no, well, I didn't mind Brad Pitt's acting, but I didn't like his character Tyler. Who he was? I can't remember. I don't want to remember. Fight Club was a really bad movie. Don't watch it if you haven't already. Worse uh, than Black Panther, easily. Yeah, it is. Black, yeah. Fight Club's actually like a, it's one of my least favorite movies, especially it's, for the fact that it's held up so high. It's boring. It's predictable. It's like Pulp Fiction. People put it up so high, and I'm just like. Uh, like, I don't get it. I don't Fiction, get what attracts people. Pulp to it. Fiction's actually like a decent movie. Pulp Fiction's only good moments are when Samuel L. Jackson goes on rants. Only good mo- no, moments. Okay, in that's just movie. that's because you're biased against Samuel L. <laughs> Jackson. But he is fucking awesome. Yeah, he's a pimp. There, there are some good things about Pulp Fiction. There's like nothing good about Fight Club. Yeah. But. <gasps> He's schizophrenic. Don, Don, Don. No shit. <laughs> Who wouldn't have guessed that? Um, just like Fight Club, uh, Edward Norton's Incredible Hulk is incredibly unlikable. And it's not just from an actor standpoint, like an acting standpoint. We have a, a very poorly written script here. Oh, folks. go away! It's a it's a fine script. It is it not. Fo- a okay, fine it's a script. basic comic book script. Yes, it follows a basic comic book structure, but it's not flawed in the sense that it's like 
derailing itself. It has a villain that it keeps from the very beginning to the very end. The villain does have background and depth behind it. It also has boring dialogue, poorly written characters. Some of the dialogue, okay, some of the dialogue is pretty <clears throat> fucking bad at moments. I'll give you that. There's moments when he's talking to Liv Tyler and they're like, they're trying to do like romance. I'm like, oh my god, there's no chemistry between these two actors. That said... There's no chemistry between Edward Norton and any actor, because he's that bad. That said, the villain, Abomination, in The Incredible Hulk is one of the best villains we've gotten in the MCU, in my opinion. <laughs> he is awesome, dude. He is a he is literally you just a like special the whole... operative super agent. That It's basically evil Captain America. How can that not be interesting? Because it was poorly handled. No, it wasn't. He's a, I can't remember the actor on him, but he did a phenomenal job you, with the character. You take... You take the Hulk, literally give him like an identical villain of who the Hulk is, and the two of them are, are fighting each other on screen with like boring punches. And how is that cool? So what? Uh, the fight at the very beginning between Hulk and Thanos was boring. No, it wasn't, and you know it was awesome. Um, it wasn't as awesome as some of the action scenes that came later. For one, the Incredible Hulk. Had a 10 minute fight scene against Abomination. <laughs> One that Thanos was able to deal with in like 15 seconds. We're going to agree to disagree. I think that there are a lot of saving graces in Incredible Hulk. I think it's actually very underrated as a comic book movie. Nope. And I think Ang Lee's <clears throat> Hulk is one of the worst. Like, remember how I said I, get, I don't give some comic book movies passes? Ang Lee's Hulk is one of those movies. That movie is garbage. That you know, movie is mediocre. The Incredible watch, Hulk is garbage. Go watch Nostalgia Critics. <laughs> go watch Nostalgia Critics review on Ang Lee's Hulk, and that's exactly how I feel about that movie. <laughs> it's it's garbage. It's, it is a blight to comic book movies. It's a movie that wears at its screen time very early on. Like it, it's just way too long for the story it's trying to tell. But the story tells is somewhat interesting, unlike the Incredible Hulk story. You know what I like to watch Hulk do? Fight giant poodles. You know what I like to see Hulk do? Fight himself. <laughs> we'll agree to disagree. Alright, so that was your number two? Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No. Uh, well, besides the fact that that movie really deserves to just stay in the garbage forever. Um, do you want to go next? You can go next. See how we're doing. Okay. My number three. You gotta cut their achievement. <sighs> this Look, is... I just talked to you once and you're ready to like jump up in my face. Th this was a hard decision for me. Let him. But I Let have him. to go with Iron Man. Iron Man 1. Ah, uh, that's gonna be my number four, so. Iron Man 1 is one of the most boring MCU movies I've ever watched and it was one that I came into late because I never watched it back in 2006 2006 um but uh, how do people like Tony Stark so much like, people think that Iron Man 1 a lot of people still today think Iron Man 1 is one of the best MCU movies and they hold him up as high as like the Dark Knight and shit they think it's like a really serious take on a superhero and they like compared to like the Dark Knight, Winter Soldier, and stuff. And I'm just like, no. Like, Cole, it's for one, it's the worst. Everybody says Iron Man 2 is the worst Iron Man movie. Iron Man 2 is better than Iron Man 1. I can't really comment on Iron Man 2 either, actually. Cause I've, I've it's just seen, a lot more comic -y. I've seen parts of it. And it introduces uh, War Machine. I mean, like, more War Machines is better for me, personally. It's not Don Cheadle, though, is it? Because I don't like yeah, Don, Don Cheadle. Cheadle. I fucking hate Don Cheadle, man. Don Cheadle's a fine actor. Yeah, he's a horrible actor in the MCU, anyway. <laughs> I disagree. Um, Iron but, Man 1, though? Iron Man 1 had two generic villains. Need Like, both. One of them was, like, this... Uh, where's he? Yeah, he was a Middle Eastern guy. He was like, I want to take over the world. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> And then, it's the same thing with comic books. I want to take over the world. 
<laughs> like, good job, Iron Man. <laughs> and the second guy was just like a dirty businessman. Yeah. Iron Monger. Uh, he was basically just like a worse version of uh, Yellow Stark. Jacket. I, I thought he was like basically he was he was Tony Stark, just evil Tony Stark. Yeah. And don't, I don't like Tony Stark as a character, especially in Iron Man One. We gotta use arms to destroy the world <laughs> and make money. I did like. Uh, one thing I did like about Iron Man 1, though, was the creation of the suit in when he was held captive. I did like the whole held captive moment. I thought it was kind of a serious issue that was especially prominent. I didn't like the prominent. whole thing, but I liked, like, minute, a few minutes of it. It was a very movie. serious issue that was very prominent at the time it was released. It was very, very, like, topical. So I thought it was kind of brazen for them to take that on. That said, other than that, I mean, like, Iron Man, I guess, looks cool, but he's just a mech. Basically, all of the action scenes were so boring. Like, it's chased I was... by a jet, and then he fights Ironmonger at the end. And I thought the whole Ironmonger fight at the end, while it's all right, if you're gonna say like base the movie's good, like ju- like greatness on action, Iron Man Two's ending action scene was fucking awesome, and it's one of the main reasons I hold it above Iron Man One. The action in Iron Man Two is fucking killer, man. It's one of the best fucking movies we've had from the MCU for action. It's actually pimp when he's... Shit, Iron Man 2. Yeah, when he starts taking on all the bots okay. and shit with War Machine. Oh, you sent me that scene. Yeah, that is it. not... Oh, go that's, away. That's that scene's cool. awesome, no. dude. That is awesome. And you just remind me why I'm never going to watch Iron Man 2 all the way through. <laughs> I'll give Iron Man 3 a chance, but... It, from the looks of it, Iron Man 2 is a better film than Iron Man. I can't really... Included in the list of the worst movies because I haven't seen enough of it. But Iron Man 1 is just like boring action scenes. Uh, one of the most despicable actors in Hollywood, besides Edward Norton. Um, and. What's his name? Don Cheadle? Was that his name? The original War Machine? Or no, that's the second one. That's but Terrence, Terrence Howard. Howard. He's like, You ready to do Iron Man 2? About that, Terrence. You see, they gave me your paycheck. See, um, <laughs> I wasn't rich enough. I needed extra millions. <laughs> so you fucked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is a fucking dirty, dirty ass. <laughs> Everybody holds him so high because he's the golden boy, but he's just a rich It's prick. hard to appreciate Robert Downey Jr. as an actor when his best role is literally a character that has no range. It's himself. He's playing himself. <laughs> He's playing as a douchebag, basically. He's playing a fucking asshole. An egotistical asshole. <laughs> How do you like Iron Man? What's his name? Uh, crap, what's his name? Happy. God plays Happy. His uh, bodyguard. He also directed the movies. The Iron Man movies. Oh, um... I can't remember his name. It's not Ron Howard, is it? No. Anyway, he must have been like... I got someone perfect for the role because he fought for John Robert Favreau. Dan. That's it. Yeah. He fought for uh, him. I think they wanted Tom Cruise to play Iron Man originally, and he fought for Robert Downey Jr. to play the the character because he knew he'd be perfect for it. What have you done? I think I don't know, man. <laughs> I think like I don't like Robert Downey Jr. as an actor, but he is Iron Man. Uh, maybe like Chris Evans is Captain America. Chris Evans became Captain America. Chris Evans is actually a dynamic actor who had, who can it's surprise and take a whole bunch. He was very underrated. It was because he let people do things with him like in Not Another Team movie when he had the whipped cream on his nipples and dick. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. That's the kind of thing that makes sure you never get hired in Hollywood for several years. But Chris Evans managed to bounce back. Like the scale I did in the review for Fantastic Four, the captain with Chris Evans at his best and worst, and you see down there he's like <laughs> the whipped cream and shit. Very top. He's there as Captain America. But yeah, that's those are just some of the reasons I I think it's not a horrible movie, but Iron Man One is just like the most generic MCU garbage that could hit the market and you guys all ate well, it, it you should be ashamed of I guess I guess you could argue it wasn't generic at the time because obviously it kickstarted it so no maybe, it was a generic action film I guess yeah I don't mean it was a generic MCU movie it was a generic action movie that really I think has no place in that marvelous cinematic universe I've always looked at Iron Man with the same like I've, I've always looked at him in the same light ever since I first read a comic with him and I just immediately was like 
this is a boring Batman. And that, I'd like, I can't pull myself away from that. Whenever I see him on screen or I see him in a comic or something, I'm just like, that's a stupid Batman. Like, Batman's way cooler than he that. He is. Batman's just a cooler version of him. By a long shot, yeah. too. And, yeah. like, Iron Man does have some interesting uh, character arcs in the comics every now and then. But, like, Disney is not touching them, man. They're not touching the alcoholic arc. They're not touching anything like that, man. It's not kid friendly. They they touch on it briefly in Iron Man too, but it's more like a suggested kind of thing, right? They don't go full ham into just him being like pissed drunk, like can't do anything, can't get his life together. Everybody just stays away from him. Like that's the Iron Man I want to see anyway. But it wasn't just a character that bothered me, like um, Pepper Potts. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. I mean, what? I didn't say that. She's not that sexy. <laughs> okay, compared to some of the other girls, yeah. She's, um... Me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't enjoy her as an actress. I don't think her and Robert Downey Jr. had any chemistry, if I'm being honest. I think they have a bit of chemistry, because they're both horrible people in real life, so... Oh, there you go. Horrible <laughs> people should get together. There you are, though. She's apparently a horrible... From what I've heard, anyway. I obviously haven't met her, so I can't, but... From what I've heard, she's a horrible human being. This coffee is way too hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, that's all I have to say about Iron Man. It's bad. Alright, my third is... I thought you already had your third. No, I, you went first because oh. we're doing it like match up, like mixed up. Uh, my third is The Dark World. Uh, the Dark World. Um, this is my fourth, so I'm a. I'm and my a, fourth is Iron Man, so. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just jump to fifth right after this. Um, the Dark World. It's not. I think there are things about it I did enjoy. I really enjoyed the action. I really liked uh, some of like little things like the sound effects. I remember in theaters watching it with you, and I said, "This kind of reminds me of Star Wars when they were flying in the spaceships and stuff and shooting lasers the and stuff." Malakath or Malakath? Yeah, I thought the elves looked really cool. He was a boring ass villain, but I still <clears> think <throat> they looked cool. I think visually, the Dark World was phenomenal. That's a good way. To put a it. lot of people don't didn't like the visual. No, stuff I thought the visuals were amazing. They thought it, it was too too dark, too dark and gritty. Well, I liked it. I li- they. It's not like they. They went off from it. The entire movie was dark themed, and I like that. And the whole premise with Natalie Portman as this, like, as she's getting swallowed, but she gotta stop doing comic book movies and like nerd stuff, man. She obviously doesn't. Like she it. hates it. So she's oh, so there's a money little paycheck involved. <laughs> uh, all right, this can fund my scientific research. I just the fuck she's doing. I watched Jackie the other night with uh, Natalie Portman. She plays uh, Jackie Kennedy, and it goes through the, the days after. John, uh, John F. Kennedy got shot in the head. And it's like how she uh, responded to that, basically. Oh. It's pretty a good movie, actually. It's pretty depressing, but it's pretty good. So, lesson to Natalie Portman. Stick the movies that you actually want to do. Yeah. And your acting she, she's will a, shine. She's a phenomenal actress. She Black just, Swan, for instance. She doesn't give a shit about nerdy stuff. No. You um, can tell. She was bad in Star Wars. She was bad in this. Yeah. Um... I thought she did even a bit better in the original Thor, because like, I felt like there was chemistry between her and Chris Hemsworth. I think that just comes more from the fact, though, that the Marvel girls like see the dudes, and they're just like, oh, his muscles. <laughs> like fucking... Uh, Haley Atwell. Yeah, well, oh, my God. <laughs> she um, was like ready to drop her pants for Chris Evans, man, yeah. when she saw him in the... I think Chris Evans should have totally hit that. <laughs> he probably did be on the scenes, man. Come on, now. No, I, I think she had a... Um, Long term, you think that's gonna husband. stop Chris Evans? <laughs> Chris Evans, one of the best people around, philanthropist, like extraordinaire. So, uh, I'm gonna cheat so on your husband. <laughs> hey, look, I can't speak for Chris Evans, I can only speak from what I personally know. <laughs> How about I show you what the star is actually made of and just show you like, the white star? <laughs> uh, hey, um. But yeah, um, just a second, I'll be first. Oh, sorry, the Dark World. Uh, yeah, visually, I really enjoyed this movie. Other than that, man, the movie's kind of crap. Uh, it's not like horrible. It's just kind of boring. It is. Yeah. Uh, I think we completely agree on this this film, actually. Yeah, it's just it's not. 
there's no oomph. And there's no, com- like, there's no comedic value behind that movie. No. Oh my god. I, I, and it's got some really horrible actors. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. The, the horrible acting of his companions, his four companions. Oh like, yeah. Well, they replaced one of them with a new actor. And, yeah, I don't <clears> think <throat> that the... And that's saying something, because I actually enjoy one of them. One of them was in uh, Rome, the TV series, and it was fantastic in that. But he was just, like, so generic in Thor, too. I haven't seen Rome, so I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but... He's I, a really tall guy, like Ray Winstone or something. I can't he's a big guy that eats a lot? I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's alright, but they're just not... <clears throat> they're not out there. I'd say one thing... One actor who knocked it out of the park would be Anthony Hopkins, but he knocks it out of the park and everything Oh, he my knows. God. He's one of the greatest Anthony actors Anthony Hopkins can do anything. Any role. Um, yeah, it was just, it was kind of boring. It it felt like they weren't going all the way. It felt like the director wanted to make a serious movie, but Marvel was being like, this is a Marvel movie, you gotta put a few jokes in there, man. So, yeah, it just unfortunately gets a number four, especially things I, I... No, it was your number three, wasn't it? Yeah. And I got yeah, number, number four. Three. Um, my number four. <clears throat> it could have been better. It could have been a lot yeah. better. It was, uh, pardon the pun, Thor's darkest moment in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> All See, right. I gotta go. Um, you love puns. You can't you talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think what you meant to say was, I love buns. I can't get enough of them buns. You know what I'm saying? I <laughs> like big buns. Just cuts to me eating bread like, <laughs> what, you thought I was talking about something else? You dirty minded motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Clearly I like bread. <laughs> uh, so let's do our number fives. <sighs> our finals. <clears throat> I'll go the- first. Sorry to cut you off. But number the two- Well, I guess four was supposed to be mine. So, all right, you go first. The fifth worst... I know we're going to be different on this. The fifth worst MCU movie. That's a bad man. It's Ant Man. Yeah. It is. Was Spider Man Homecoming See, close? What? Was Spider Man Homecoming close for you? I enjoyed Spider Man Homecoming more than Black Panther. Remember? I didn't even put Black Panther on my five words. Oh, I guess you didn't. No. Black Panther would be my. Next. Uh, would be like number six. Oh, yeah, because you did say Ant Man was worse than Black Panther, and I like literally had a heart attack when you said it. Ant Man is, is a good movie. It's No, it's not. I enjoyed Ant Man. <clears throat> It was basically a boring heist movie that pretty much lacked any action scenes. The, if All you, his moments when he turns small were amazing. Like when he goes down into the tub and he like gets, goes in the vacuum cleaner and shoots him out and then he like falls. He it, through like, it's just cool seeing like the world from that perspective. Yeah, well... I I don't think it was meant. I didn't take any. Yeah, well, I didn't take any comedic value as actual funny. Like, oh man, his his buddy was hilarious. You didn't laugh at his buddy. Like, I was in theaters when I saw it, and everybody was dying at him, man. And because he's talking for like Stan Lee and shit like that, like, the the only I think there were two jokes I laughed at in Ant Man, and the second one was at the end when they're fighting with the Thomas the Train Engine. Like that was fucking funny. Yeah, the Thomas Train Engine was pretty But that's pretty much it. Like, There were some really bad comedy moments, though, like when uh, the ant ramped by Buddy, he was like, i never seen a dog like that before, or something like that. I was like, what? Like, who wrote that? Like, I hope that wasn't ad-libbed. If it was, they should have kicked him off set. They should have been like, all right, you're done. <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> What I will say is I, I did enjoy the characters. It's not Hank, Hank Pym. That it, uh, Scott Lang is Paul Rudd's character. Hank Pym is the older man. Yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of Hank Pym, but uh, I did like Scott, and I did like uh, Hank's daughter because Evangeline Lilly. I can't remember her character's name. She's, She's gonna be playing the Wasp. <clears throat> um, her character was actually developed well, and she's smoking. She's just smoking hot. Huh? <laughs> but she, but the her and Scott were actually intriguing as characters, and I. I found it unfortunate that Scott wasn't given more character development, particularly between him and his daughter. Yeah, I, I agree. In fact, I told you that when we were watching it, too. It was one of the things I read up. I was like, there should have been more between two of them. Yeah. Um, 
There's it was just... the it was the most emotional uh, connection in the movie, in my opinion, and it was his whole reason for doing what he was doing. So why wasn't there more there? Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, that said, I don't like Paul Rudd as an actor. I never did, and. I really liked him as Ant Man, so I think that speaks wonders. I just think he was so much more funny as Ant Man in Civil War than he was in. He had Ant-Man. better jokes written in that. I'd say I thought his buddy was a lot funny. He wasn't really funny in Ant Man, but I thought I didn't think any of them were funny in Ant Man. <laughs> I don't like one one character. I really don't like in Ant Man was the Yellow Russian jacket. guy and Yellowjack, but the Russian guy out of his buddies. Is like the worst Russian accent I've ever heard. Like oh, I can do a better Russian accent than that. I've seen him. I've seen him in like the Belko experiment and stuff like that. He's okay as an actor. He's had better roles in Ant Man though. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, Want to talk about Yellow Jacket? I I really do. I really fucking do. <laughs> He's, I, like okay, you the can most. Say he has daddy issues for his character development, but that's not really. It's not developed for one. You have no re- like. You have no idea like as to why those started in the first place, and you're like, these are some pretty hardcore daddy issues. Like, okay, I have problems with my boss, but when they get into an argument with me, I don't go and create a fucking plan to like sell, like, miniature suits to an army of evil people to destroy the world? Like, how the hell? <laughs> like, yeah, he's just a, he's a really horribly written... We villain. need this technology <laughs> to destroy the world! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yellow Jacket is... I'm trying to think. The most Is boring. he the worst MCU villain? Because there have been a few bad I ones. I can't, no, I, I can't say, like... It's too hard to just there's, like. There's Malekith. Um. He pro. Oh well, he's off there. Anyway. There's Killmonger. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know that? Killmonger. There's actually. ego. Like you said, you couldn't stand ego. Yeah, but I don't think I put ego at the bottom. No, Yellow Jacket was worse. Cause he's just. For one, he doesn't make sense. Like, his character doesn't really... It do, it never really explains his motive. At, like, at least Ego, they they show he is literally the living embodiment of an Ego. That's why he's acting the way he's... It's, it's stupid, but he's acting that way because of it. But Yellow Jacket's character doesn't make sense. So the only thing you can reconcile that with in your mind is, well, he's just being able to be evil. Right? That's the only way you can, like, come to terms with that. He's like... He's like Emperor Palpatine if but just Emperor horror. Palpatine had several disabilities. <laughs> but I will say this about Yellow Jacket. He looked really cool. He's he's really cool looking, especially where obviously I'm more a fan of the yellow color stuff. And the actor though. That, the actor's such a waste of talent. Oh no, man. I would say the actor was in the perfect role for him because that oh, was bad. You haven't seen anything else with him in it. He's really good. Well, he left a very foul taste in my mouth. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> he left a foul taste? Like, <laughs> go watch House of Cards and you'll change your opinion on him. Uh, he's actually an amazing actor. And like Willem Dafoe, uh, he was... Miscast yeah, as a villain. He was given... I think Willem Dafoe would have made a great Green Goblin if... Perfect Green Goblin. If that mask was... Or if that entire suit was... I'd like to see Willem Dafoe do Joker, too. Like, you know his little cackle he does in Spider-Man? He goes, hey, hey. Can you imagine him doing that with the Joker face? Oh, fucking God, man. <laughs> well, I get chills just thinking about Willem Dafoe's acting range. Yeah, right. right. Nah, he's a, he's a phenomenal actor. And Platoon was a really good role for him, too. I have to say. I still haven't watched it. I think I watched it back in the day, but I... I still haven't watched it since you recommended it. Anyway, we're getting way off topic. Yeah. Ant-Man, don't watch it. It's the fifth worst MCU movie for me. All right. On number five, and I know Kyle wasn't going to pick this because he actually put it in as his honorable mention. My Doctor number Strange. five is Doctor Strange. Go fuck yourself, Doctor Strange. Um, you better explain I'm, why. Besides I'm, Dormammu. It, it that's that's the main reason I think that you can't keep fault the entire can, movie for man. just that it last falls, like, the third the third act it's the third act it's the entire third act and the third act in my opinion <clears throat> is the most important act in any movie 
the conclusion. I completely disagree. First, In my opinion, it first is. act, you need you're not gonna have an audience member stay unless uh, you develop an interesting. Premise. I think I think a conclusion is the most important. I think you need to really nip that in the bud. You can have a really good movie with a poor conclusion, but I don't think you can have a really good movie with a poor beginning. I guess, but still, um, I I think there are saving graces, and it's funny because the more I watch, each time I watch Dark Strange, I actually start to like it a little bit more. But God, I was so disappointed by that. Its feature. visuals and its acting are impressive. I found. Well, they hired a director. Okay, for one, I thought it was going to have much of a more of a horror vibe. Because he's a horror director. Yeah, yeah, and that's what they... Even the first trailer they <clears> dropped, <throat> it felt like a horror movie. I was like, this is cool. They're going to they're gonna get into the mind, like Nolan does, of like the effects of what this would actually and do to a man. And this is where... This is where watching trailers is a detriment. I went into Doctor Strange without watching a single trailer, and I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> well, okay, so I do think Benedict Cumberbatch was great as Doctor Strange. He's a great actor. Uh, the comedy didn't land, but yeah, otherwise. Yeah, the comedy doesn't land, like you said. Um, it should have been a dark movie. All the dark moments in that movie are fun, are great. The, yeah. the action's really cool. The visuals are really cool. Is it Rachel McAdams who plays the... Yeah, right? they have good chemistry. And yeah. they actually had some jokes that landed between two of them, I found. Like when he's like out of the body experience and stuff like that. I didn't find that funny. No, I, I liked did, it. I did like those moments. Um, But that third act, <clears> man, I, I really... It's the same thing as Green Lantern, man. That stupid fucking head cloud thing, man. Why do they think that comic book viewers want to see these things? I don't get it. Like, we don't want to see the mystical space head in the sky. That is not what we're into. Like, <laughs> it's so dumb. It's just... I can't... I Like, I was so... I called you up. I don't know if you remember this. I called you up after I saw it. And I've always been like, you should see these movies, Kyle, because like you're like, I'm not going to see that, or I'm going to see that, whatnot. But I always go see comic book movies in theaters. Yeah. Like, benefit of the doubt, right? Um, oh, for me, it's like... But that might change with Deadpool tools. Disney does not deserve my money. <laughs> if, unless it's a good movie. Yeah, I think that was the very first Marvel movie I, never, I was like, <clears> you <throat> don't need to go see that. And that's, I think that's a testament in and of itself. I was like, you don't need to see that. Because, like, the third act... Okay, here's an example. I've actually rebuttaled what you said before. Rogue One. Rogue One, a lot of people think the flaws are at the beginning of the movie and built throughout the... as it, like, starts to develop. I would kind of disagree, but I do think the strongest act in Rogue One is the third act. The third act is literally just a single action scene. The third act is so good in Rogue One. It's way too fucking long. No way, man. The yeah. third act is, like... Oh my god. But well, Rogue so One good. is still good because of the first two acts. No, disagree. Completely disagree. Okay, well, we can continue to just. The third disagree. act has Vader at his greatest. Oh, go. You cannot judge an entire movie by oh. one scene. <laughs> That's like, okay, for, okay, so Rogue One, Vader killing all the rebels, cherry on the cake. Doctor Strange, Dormammu's a giant cloud head in the sky, gone bad cherry on top of the cake. Like, it's just. Little nugget of shit just laid on top of it. Just like, here, try to eat that before you, you know. <laughs> Can I just scoop it out? You, you no, you have to eat it all. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think, but like I said, I don't think Doctor Strange is a bad movie. In fact, there's lots of things about Doctor Strange I like, and I like it each more each time I watch it. Um, but that ending, like... Here's why I would refute your statement on it. Dormammu was a villain would be kind of boring if Doctor Strange had to fight him with, like, some mystical arts and stuff, but you notice that all... He used that dumb thing, though. He just kept, oh, I'm gonna reverse time and reverse time and reverse time. But he, but he didn't... He didn't just, like, change time to defeat him. He used it to put him in an infinite loop. Yeah. And I thought that was a cool way to use the time stone. I mean, it's... I guess it's kind of original. I just was like... He's gonna... Like, okay, building up to the third act, I was like... And he knew he couldn't defeat the woman. Like, it, he didn't even try to fight him. So yeah, that's it for this episode. We're actually not gonna do the final question like we said we were going to earlier. Uh, just because this came, went on a this lot longer. This went on a lot longer than an hour. So. We'll save it for the next one. So yeah, uh, Infinity War was an amazing movie. We had to do this episode because of it. Yeah. Uh, go see Infinity War. Just don't even hesitate. Go see it. 
if you um, disagree with any of our choices or if you have your own kind of decisions kind of yeah. just put them in the comments below we read all the comments we're also going to skip the recommendations day i personally didn't write one i don't know if you did and plus we're about to run out of the battery so we're just gonna cut it here um our recommendation is infinity